Hey guys, so in this week's book, we looked at Gordon Wood's uh, The Radicalism of the American Revolution. In response to the quote on page 7 about the American Revolution becoming the single most event that secured the democracy and freedom and all these um, things that we love about the democracy in America. And so I think I want to start out with talking about um, how I think Gordon Wood's uh, writings are very similar to what Alexis de Tocqueville's writings were about in the 19th century, especially in his uh, democracy in America. And I, although he was a French political um, thinker and he was a very... He came from an aristocratic family. I think that um, allows for what Gordon Wood was talking about in this book about a lot of these founding fa a lot of these founding fathers um, like John Adams, Hamilton, um, Madison, ex and all these other guys um, in these royal governing figures as well that were still that still had remnants of the old. English ways of elitist society, how women should be treated, and all these other old traditional approaches were still engraved in their minds when creating the Constitution and creating these legal systems that were geared toward uh, white men rather than uh, giving equality to everyone else. And so I think... Um, also, these both of these writings resonated with the fact that um, they both discussed this move to a different political state um, from a system based on a an elitist monarchical belief system to a more democratic society and that still had even though and again it, it's still the American colony still had remnants of the elitist men and so running the colony and these regular people, everyday people, had to just submit to these ide ideologies and I think that's where you see a lot of disconnect with the people and I think that's also what a point that Gordon Wood was making in this book that even though you have people that were very true to the government of Britain. They were still, they wanted to um, form their own democracy. They wanted to have equal rights. And these men, like the Founding Fathers, wanted to still capture that um, elitist and aristocratic approach over in America. They wanted to recreate, recreate it. And so, I think what Tocqueville was talking about as well, um, that he wrote about the issues of the people becoming, uh, running things um, based on their egos, and uh, the branches of government were set up to avoid everyday people getting involved in the political schemes of how to govern people, what laws should be enacted, or what shouldn't be enacted. And so that goes along with Gordon's thoughts on a radicalized um, revolution because I don't necessarily agree that it was the most transformative revolution in American history, but for ideology's sake, um, and that is what he's arguing, is that there was a big change regarding the building of an entirely different political system. Uh, the people had the colony had to separate themselves. They had to fully immerse themselves in a different um, democracy that was engraved long ago in um, ancient uh, empires like in Greece. And so a lot of those um, ideologies were very new and they, um, these founding men had to go about recreating a different system. But I think a lot of those um, elitist ideas were still in mind. And so, <clears throat> building upon that, um, 
those ideas served the basis for the founding of the new nation and the founding fathers and the political leaders at the time of the revolution. Um, I didn't, I think, didn't believe in the people so much. They believed in a political ideology. And you see that, um, I think, and especially in uh, later Gordon uh, talked about on page 187, 188 about the uh, new Republican states. Um, they wanted to, they were very suspicious of the traditional monarchical system that the um, founding fathers were setting up. And so <clears throat> in these um, states, like in New Hampshire and North Carolina, they came up with their own state slogans that embodied a equality system like New Hampshire the New Hampshire Constitution was in, uh, instituted for uh, the common benefits protection and security of the whole community and not for the private interest or emolument of any one man family or class of men uh, and then the North Carolina Constitution stated that perpetuates and monopolies are contrary to the genius uh, to the genius of a state and ought not to be allowed and so <clears throat> I think that the founding, uh, these people were wanting to have those rights and they wanted to create a system that not just regulated how they went about day-to-day -day lives, but they wanted to put themselves first. They wanted to put a society first above the individual and that is not what uh, the founding fathers had in mind. They wanted to put the individuals first. They wanted to have a government set up so that they could reflect an absolutist um, influence. And I think also you have the issues with um, the commercialization efforts and a lot of these um, commercial uh, commercialization, industrialization early on, and th these things were happening at the time of the revolution and they um, I think they brought forth an issue with in the system of the Founding Fathers. They saw these issues of the population growing too fast, and they saw these issues of people um, wanting to better themselves, but they didn't care about that so much. And so... <clears throat> I think when you see the revolutionary movement, it looks very different with social justice and equality among minorities, um, which it was what Tocqueville would talk about later on in his different path these men took on making sure first the political and legal system was set up uh, first and foremost to get any uh, to get away from the individual power, and you see that in the royal authority, the checks and balances system of the American government. And that unsettled a lot of people. And I think that's also the issue later on with the um, the um, setup of the social um, lineup of the government. Like, um, you have the social interactions between the poor versus rich, workers versus employers. Um, and especially one specific um, category stuck out to me on page 175 was the Patriots versus Courtiers. And I didn't exactly know what Courtiers were at first, but they're basically, um, in, um, they are, they have these titles um, that were either a birthright or um, bestowed upon them uh, from personal connections. And I so, I think what Gordon was getting at was that this specific <clears throat> social interaction caused um, that political um, fragment to take place. These little pieces of issues that were going on, like this social um, issue between um, these two classes of ideologies, hurt the... Um, Put, or put a strain on how people reacted in relation to the forming of the American Revolution. And so you have 
also that economic factor, commercialization, and so, um, and also the social issues with uh, minorities and um, the slavery issue as well. And I think at the end of the day, his, I think this quote, to a certain extent, extent was accurate, um, but just for political sake, uh, for politics sake. Um, I don't think socially, just like with um, the reactions to this book, and that there was uh, he that Gordon um, left out those issues and he didn't. It's just that he didn't see them as what radicalized this movement in America for the uh, American Revolution. And I agree with that, but then there's also, I just don't think that the American Revolution was the most uh, radicalized movement ever in the history of the founding of the nation. I think there was also movements in later on in the 19th century and even in the 1960s and 70s with the civil rights movement and the suffrage movements that women were, the feminist movements and all these other social changes. I think those are what the most important threads concerning social issues were in regard to how it dramatically changed the atmosphere of American politics and social issues. Um, and so hopefully I answered this question to the full extent that I could, and I look forward to uh, reading everybody else's posts.